Sola Scriptura, everyone. This is his word on. Um, real quick, I just want to welcome all the newcomers that have been coming to the channel of late. This is what God can do for you guys, man. It's crazy. <laughs> you know, a week ago, I was pretty much shadow banned, and now I've got, what, fi almost 50 views on the, you know, the Black Desert one, 40 views on the Gog Tartaria one, man. It's crazy what God can do, and I don't deserve it. But truly, it's an honor to do this for you guys. And I really hope you guys are learning something from this, Nate. It's getting you to do your own research. But anyways, let's get on with it. Alright, let's get right into this. So today we're going over the New Age infection of the modern day Christian church. Guys, I want to start this off by saying any group, any church, any thing that you ever want to join look it up research and make sure they practice what they preach right and does it agree like let's say Gnostic Christians right does it agree with the Word of God or are they just putting out something their own little tenets their own man-made traditions right that's what we have a lot in the Christian church is a bunch of man-made traditions, you know, and, but not only that, we haven't been watching. These people have infiltrated the group or the church, you know, and on all sides, and you'll see we used to be a unified group and then all of a sudden 40,000 denominations but anyways I want to show to you guys how the new age has influenced the modern day Christian church and we're going to start with Helena Blavatsky or Madame Blavatsky if you want to call her that Helena Petrovna Blavatsky, often known as Madame Blavatsky, Ukrainian, <laughs> whatever that says, 12th of August, was a Russian author who co-founded the Theos or Theosophical Society in 1875. She ga er, gained an international following as the leading theor er, theoretician of theosophy. Born into an aristocrat family of Russian Germanic descent, and you, you nerve. Oh my goodness, I'm gonna butcher that. <laughs> yeah, Katernishnoslav. Yeah, I don't want to insult you, <laughs> Ukrainians. There, sorry guys. Anyways, then in Russian Empire. Now, Nipro in Ukraine. Yeah, I'm going to butcher this. Blavatsky traveled widely around the empire as a child. Largely self-educated, she developed an interest in Western esotericism during her teenage years. According to her later claims, in 1849 she embarked on this series of world travels, visiting Europe, the Americas, and India. She also claimed that philosophy in science, both cont or contemporary critics and later biographers have argued that some of all these foreign visits were fictitious. Oh, sorry. During this period, she encountered a group of spiritual adepts, the masters of the ancient wisdom, who sent her to Shigatsi, Tibet. They were trained, or they trained her to develop a deeper understanding of the synthesis of religion philosophy and science 
Both cont er, contemporary critics and later biographers have argued that some of all these foreign visits were fictitious and that she spent this period in Europe. By the 1870s, Blavatsky was involved in the spiritualist movement. Although defending the genuine existence of spiritualist phenomena, she argued against the mainstream spiritualist idea that the entities contacted were the spirits of the dead. Relocating to the United States, she befriended Henry Steele Olcott and rose to public attention as the spirit as a spirit medium, attention that included public accusations of fraudulence. Sounds like she knew who they were. But anyways, she had she. This is the woman who started the New Age Theosophy, which would become the New Age. Right. She uh, developed. Oh yeah. Anyways, take a look at this. You have this, right? Oh, hey, look! It's the swastika. And then Hitler, and you know he. Uh, Let's just say he kind of believed it. She had a theory. It's called the seven root racist theory. Guess who was one of them? The Aryans. Wonder where Hitler got it from. But you know what? What do I know? But anyways. Let's get into this. And look, look at that, guys. Look at that. There's the Israeli flag. Something's going on here. The, what it is is the externalization of the hierarchy now we get into Alice Bailey was a teacher and writer and founder together with the husband Foster Bailey of spiritual movement growing out of the theosophical tradition she was one of the first writers to use the term new age early years Alice Bailey was born to a well-to-do parents in Manchester, England. Her upper middle-class background was religious and also service-oriented. Although she showed mystical tendencies, her child was generally unhappy. They were, for me, the years of greatest physical comfort and luxury. They were the years of freedom from all material anxiety, but they were, at the same time, years of miserable questioning and disillusionment of unhappy discovery and loneliness. She began already at a young age to search for the world of meaning and believed the progress was rooted in mystical consciousness. Can't you see Christians have dropped the ball? Mm -hmm. There's people out there that don't know who they are and are lost and confused and Christians will just poo-poo it, put it to the next person, do nothing about it, you know, keep giving us money, but anyways, both parents, Frederick Foster, Latrobe, Bateman, and Alice Holland's head died of tuberculosis by the time Alice was eight, so she and her sister lived from then on with their grandparents in Surrey. They were educated by governess or governesses, oh my goodness, governesses, and later attended a finishing school in London. Their young life was completely disciplined by people or the social conventions of the time, but she and her sister were also taught to care about the poor and sick and to realize that fortunate circumstances entailed responsibility. Basically, here, anyways, this is where I want to get to. In order to support her daughters, Alice worked in Sardine Cannery. That's not where I, Where is it? Okay. Yeah, I guess I do want to read that. During the time, age 35, as Miss Alice Ann Evans, she was admitted to the American Theosophical Society as a member on September 1st, 1915. She is listed as one of the 15 founding members of the Pacific Grove Lodge. 
formerly, hmm, there's the Grove guy. Remember we talked about Groves. Formerly uh, Monterey Lodge in California, according to their um, charter dated September 17, 1950. In 1918, she was admitted to the esoteric section she spent in the next several years working while studying the new theos theosophical ideas, attending meetings, poring over the secret doctrine, which is Madame Blavatsky's book, sorry I forgot to say that, and attending to integrate these ideas with strict Christianity of her upbringing. Her mystical side found certain ideas such as the law of karma and the existence of masters appealing and helpful to her during this difficult time. See where uh, the ascended masters and all that come from? She moved to Hollywood, California, where she at first worked in the vegetarian cafeteria of the Crotona Colony. In Crotona, she met Foster Bailey, National Secretary of the Theosophical Society, whom she sub subsequently married. Foster Bailey and Alice Evans each reached high positions within the society. She became editor of the society's periodical, The Messenger. A member of the committee administering Crotona. Okay, and they were both dismissed in 1920. Then L. Rogers were elected president of the society, which was disappointing to both of them. Thus ended our time in Crotona and our real the our effort to be service to the Theosophical Society. They moved to New York and they became members of Central Lodge and were active several members. So, uh, March 17th, I'm trying to figure out where the good juicy stuff here. Membership in the Lodge, Bailey's participating panel, where is it? They basically made, they made what is called Lucis Trust. Let's see if here, here we go, okay. The Lucis Trust is a nonprofit organization incorporated in the United States in 1922 by Alice Bailey and her husband Foster Bailey to act as a fiduciary trust for the publishing of 24 books of esoteric philosophy published, published under Alice Bailey's name and to fund and administer activities concerned with the establishment of right human relations. These include Arcane School, a school of esoteric training, World Goodwill, Triangles, and the Beacon Magazine, as well as Publishing Company. The objective of the Lucius Trust as standard in its charter to encourage the study of comparative religion, philosophy, science, and to encourage every line of thought trending in the broadening of human sympathies and interests and in expansions of ethical uh, ethical religious and educational literature to assist and engage in activities for the relief of suffering for human betterment in general to further worthy efforts to humanitarian educational ends. The Lucius Trust Publishing Company was founded in 1920 as the ready Lucifer Publishing company. The name has been attributed to Bailey's study of theosoph theosophical teachings that Lucifer, the archangel, brought intelligence to mankind. The name <laughs> was then changed in 1925 to Lucius Publ uh, Publishing Company. It was headquarters to, I wonder why, I wonder why. But you guys see how it's one religion won everything with Lucifer. You see why I believe? See, if you're new to this, I truly believe Lucifer is the beast. Not, and nowhere in the Bible does it say Lucifer is Satan. It says Lucifer, son of the morning, or Hillel ben Sahar. Sahar was a Canaanite god. So, anyways, there's Lucifer popping up. So now we can start seeing where things are going here, right?
And I'm sorry it took that long to get there. That's what I was, the meat and potatoes that I was looking for. I just thought it was on that page. I apologize. But anyways, so Alice Bailey made this company, right? She was the first one to use the New Age. And here she is using Lucifer Publishing Company. Okay. Now let's get to the, the externalization of the hierarchy. Alice Bailey. I'm just going to read this part here. Hold on. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. Okay. The great invocations. Let the forces of light bring illuminations to mankind. Let the spirit of peace be spread abroad. May men of good will everywhere meet in the spirit of cooperation. May forgiveness on the part of all men be the keynote of this time. Sounds great, doesn't it? Sound, sounds cool, right? Sounds good. Let the power attend the efforts of great ones. So let it be and help us to do our part. Let the lords of liberation issue forth, send in masters. Then them brings uh, secure to the sons of man. Let the rider from the secret place... Hmm. Let the rider from the secret place come forth, come and save, come forth, O mighty one. Okay, okay. So let's go back here. Ready? When Alice was a teenager in England, she had been under the supervision of a mysterious man who had visited her in person twice. She described, this is from WikiLeaks, or not WikiLeaks, Wikipedia, right? She described the first encounter, and take it what you will, okay? Wikipedia is Wikipedia. But anyways, first encounter in her unfinished autobiography. Ready? He told me there was some work that it was planned that I could do in the world, but that it would entail my changing my disposition very considerably. I would have to give up being such an unpleasant little girl I must try and get some measure of self-control. My future usefulness to him and to the world was dependent upon how I handled myself and the changes I can manage to make. Sounds awesome, right? Sounds great. You know? But here we go. 1 Thessalonians 5.3 For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction come upon them as travail upon a woman with child. And they shall not escape. Hmm. So they're preaching peace and safety. Right? This is that beast, you know, picture here, right? And then let the souls of men awaken to light. And may, the, or may they stand with mass intent. Massed intent, right? The, you know, the community the world community right let the flat of the lord or the what is that fiat of the lord go forth and the end of woe has come come forth O mighty one the hour of service of the saving force has now arrived let it be spread abroad O mighty one let light and love power and death fulfill the purpose of the coming one hmm this is where new age comes from people Okay. The will to save is here. The love to carry forth the work is widely spread abroad. The active aid of all who know the truth is also here. Come forth, O mighty one, and blend these three. Construct a great defending wall. The rule of evil now must end. Okay, who? The rule of Jesus Christ? Is that what they're talking about? Ask yourselves this. And who is this mighty one they're talking about? Is that Lucifer? She named her stuff Lucifer Trust, right? But here we go. Now we're going to get into where the church comes into play here. Prosperity theology, sometimes referred to as prosperity gospel, the health and wealth gospel, the gospel of success, or seed faith, is religious belief among some Protestant Christians that financial blessing and physical well-being are 
always the will of God for them, and that faith, positive speech, and donations to religious causes will cause cause increase the one's material worth. You know that Isaiah fifty three zero two seed. You know material and especially financial success is seen as a sign of divine favor. If you're poor, you just didn't have enough faith. It's ridiculous. Anyways, prosperity theology has been criticized by leaders from various Christian dominations, but even though they have a little bit of it in there too themselves. But anyways, I can't say much because I'm an idiot too, so... I've done, believed in stupid things too, so, anyways, including some Pentecostal charismatic movements who maintain that it's irresponsible, promotes idolat yeah, idolatry and contrary to the Bible. Secular as well as some Christian observers have also criticized prosperity theology as exploitive of the poor, yeah. The practices of some preachers have attracted scandal and some have been charged with financial fraud. You know, or how about the people is, I need a private jet just for me, you know, not not for you, but, but for me because I need to go around the world to preach the gospel, right? Better, better shut up. Anyways, okay, the Bible theology views Bible as a contract between God and humans. How? Where does it say that? Anyways, if humans have faith in God, he will deliver security and prosperity. The doctrine emphasizes the importance of personal empowerment, proposing that it is God's will for his people to be blessed. The atonement, reconciliation with God, is interpreted to include the alleviation of sickness and poverty, which are viewed as curses to be broken by faith. This is believed to be achieved through donations of money, visualization, and positive confession. What does that sound like, guys? Starting to see a theme here? It was during the healing revivals in the 1950s that prosperity theology first came to prominence in the United States. Hmm. This is a little bit after Alice Bailey was doing all that stuff. Although commentators have linked the origins of theology to the New Thought movement, which began in the 19th century, the prosperity teachings later figured prominently in the Word of Faith movement in 1980s televangelism, 19, or 1990s and 2000s. It was adopted by influential leaders of the Pentecostal movement. Let's go ahead and name them all later. E. E. W. Kenyon, Oral Roberts. A. A. Allen, Rupert Tilton, T. L. Osborne, Joel Osteen, Creflo Dollar, Kenneth Copeland, Reverend Dyke, and Kenneth Hagen. There you go. Stay away from those guys. I'm telling you. But you're gonna see. Let's see right here. Let's go to the law of attraction. In the New Thought Ready Spiritual Movement, the Law of Attraction is a pseudoscience based on the belief that positive or negative thoughts bring positive or negative experiences into a person's life. The belief is based on the ideas that people and their thoughts are made from pure energy and the process of like energy attracting like energy exists through which the person can improve their health, wealth, and personal relationships. This comes straight from the new age. Okay, the new thought. Right? Right here. The law of attraction uh, will certainly and unhearingly bring you to conditions, environment, experiences in life corresponding with your habitual, characteristic, predominant mental attitude. Uh, the law of attraction wor works universally on every plane of action. The Secret, Rhonda Byrne, yep. And The Secret was a big book that promoted this stuff, right? Now, here you go. Is the notion of name it and claim it biblical? 
Now, I don't agree with everything here, guys, but or everything that's on this site. And I will say it, bravo to uh, the author here. Okay, I agree with this. The popular book, The Secret, claims that we can have whatever we want by attracting it to ourselves. It centers on the ideology that we are in control of our lives, that we can snap practically everything into existence if we want it badly enough, and we believe. This secret power of faith can create a reality beyond your wildest dreams. If you have enough faith, your business will boom. You have wealth and happiness, and all you want will be beckoned unto your call. Ah, the prosperity gospel, name it and claim it, assures us what we will for our lives we will get. Now, while I believe and trust it beyond our circumstances, we are not God. Paul warns us in Colossians 2.8. Here we go, I'm gonna, right here. Colossians 2.8. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Boy, does that explain today's church in a nutshell. You have these same people saying, Jesus, the, you know, Jesus Christ's words were just for the Jews, right? Even though he says he came for the whole world, but what do I know? But that's where a lot of that comes from. And bravo. Got to give credit where credit is due. I don't know what they believe on this website. I didn't look too much into it. But bravo to a crosswalk on this article right here. Good job, guys. But anyways. There's the word of faith. It's the same thing. And all that junk. But here we go. 1 Timothy 4, 1-3 Now the Spirit speaking expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received thanksgiving in them which believe and knoweth the truth. And then here it says because I know exactly what people are going to bring you up here so okay for every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving for it is sanctified by the word of God in prayer we forget what he called food right but anyways this thing here explains it well what he's talking about here Anyways, ah, oh well. This explains it well. Chapter 4 marks a major transition in the focus of Paul's letter. 1 Timothy chapter 1 through, or through 3 emphasizes personal matters related to the church worship. Here, the primary topic is dangers proposed by false teachers and the specific responsibility of various groups. Chapter 4 is often viewed as being written in two parts, a description of false teachers in Ephesus and practical steps for defense against these false teachers. 1 Timothy 4, 6-16 Verses 1-5 begin with the focus on what the Spirit says will happen in the end times. As we wait for the return of Christ, many will fall away from the faith. Some of these people will attempt to enforce false rules as conditions for following God. One early example of such people present when Paul wrote these words was the Gnostics. This group taught that all physical matter was evil, leading them to denounce many foods as well as marriage. However, according to Paul, everything created by God is good. Yep, and should not be rejected out of hand. Anything used as God intended, ready, intended, and with thankful spirit has been sanctified or set apart through the word of God and prayer. There you go. But where I was getting at is Gnostics. The Gnostic Christians out there believe that 
there is a lot of Hebrew rooters out there that are saying that it's it's a sin to eat meat, you know. And there's a lot of people, you know. Here's the thing. There are clean animals. And there are animals like that eat dead flesh that have toxins in them that are bad for you that God says don't eat right the ones that he intended for us right but anyways I just wanted to get that out there because the whole point of that was to show you that the Gnostics and all this stuff have infiltrated the Christian church now here's the light workers y'all if y'all should know who Roma Downey is Especially Christians know should know who Roma Downey is. The light workers celebrates the good all around us, reminding us that God's grace is unshakable, His love is unmistakable, His kindness contagious. Our mission to create engaging, uplifting, inspirational content that breaks through the clutter, building the community of sharing and uniting a movement in the real world that motivates people to celebrate and share the good all around. We're on a mission to brighten your day. Sounds great, right? Now, she's the one who made the Bible series in the Son of God. And looks now she's making a resurrection on the Discovery Channel and on the History Channel. Do you remember any Christian that's really preaching the truth ever being on the Discovery Channel? That isn't going to be have their mainstream veneer to it. I want to show you something. Roma Downey, she's the, does a, a magazine It's called The Light Workers. She does this, right? I want to show you what Light Workers is. No thanks. The term Light Worker is increasingly used, but what exactly is a Light Worker? And what is their role in society? So Nona Bandolamini looks at some of their common personality traits and shows how to identify if you could be a light worker too. If you if you regularly read online magazines centered on the well-being, spirituality, or expanding your consciousness, you've probably come across the term light worker. And no matter how many references are made to it, you still may be entirely sure what the light worker actually is, how to identify one. And while there's no science-backed evidence or research studies that can say what a light worker is, more and more people from our community seek to know more about these driven souls. So what is a light worker? Technically, the term light worker was first coined by author and teacher Michael Merdad relatively recently, in the early 80s. Later in 1997, Doreen Virtue released the book The Light Worker's Way. The simplest way to describe light workers would be as beings who feel an enormous pull towards helping others. Let's brighten your day. Also referred to as crystal babies, indigos, earth angels, star seeds. I wonder where we heard that stuff before. These spiritual beings volunteer to act as beacon for the earth and commit to serving humanity. Huh. So what's this doing in Christianity? There she is. Hear the heart behind light workers from our co founder and president, Roma Downey. She's the one. See, look, she made all these. Huh. Look at all that. Nice Christian books, right? Or light worker new age stuff. But nobody saw it because it had Jesus in it, right? It's got to be good. It's got Jesus in it. That's how they do it. That's how they do it. They And these people believe Jesus is just an ascended master. He's not God. He's just an ascended master. So, right. so they have no problem telling you they believe in Jesus. Right? And if you think about it, all this grace stuff. Now, God has grace, right? We all don't deserve to know the truth. We don't deserve to know Jesus, right? But yet he gives us that. 
but the way grace is thrown around, you know, like, you can do whatever you want. It's okay. Just do as thou wilt. Like Aleister Crawley says. Here, let's bring that up real quick. This is another part of the New Age stuff, right? Aleister Crawley. Do as thou wilt. Let's see here. Do as thou wilt. Oh, yeah. He made the Book of the Law. Sorry. Book of the Law. Psychosecret text. It's the Lima. Alistair Crowley said that it was dedicated to him. Dedicated to him by beyond human being who called himself Iowas. Basically... He says in there that the whole book of the law is to do as thou wilt. Be who you want to be. Follow your heart, right? But the Bible, this is what the Bible says. Is deceitfully wicked. Oops. Ready? The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? But this is where the New Age leads you. This is where the name it and claim it leads you to yourself. You're a champion, right? There's a champion in you. Even though you drink in and you're beating your wife, even though you're sinning, even though you're living the party life, Woo. you know, you're, you're going to church one day, but then the next, hey, this is me, by the way, guys, I'm not trying to put you down, I'm not trying to judge anyone here, okay, this is me too, but let's just say nobody knew I was a Christian until about January 2020, but anyways, The reason why, you know, we have the epidemic of just filth, smut going on, it's because of this. Because we're because the world tells us to follow our hearts. Let me put it this way: Have you guys ever had a spouse in your heart, or not a spouse, but a girlfriend, right, or a boyfriend? that you, your heart was saying they're the one they're the one they're the one but then three months later four months later they show their true colors and they know who they say they are and then all of a sudden you guys aren't together right hey I've been the person on both sides I've been the person who changed and been the person who was like whoa you know what I mean but we need to start following the truth, not just our hearts. We need to have this intact. We're seeing what happens when you follow your heart and you go off emotion. You don't research things. You get emotionally invested in it, even though it's false or whatever. But it's, it's true because I believe it and it's true, you know. But anyways, I like to, I want to leave off this. I want to show you that there are infiltrators. And I've already said this many times in my, you know, my videos. This isn't the best video and I do apologize, but... Second Corinthians eleven twelve or thirteen through fifteen for such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, 
it is no great thing it is ministers also be transformed as ministers of righteousness whose end shall be the according to thy works and then I want to put this last thing up Test all things okay JV who would have thought the Bible would be saying this right prove all things hold fast to that which is good and then let's go yeah yep let's see right. hold on maybe I should just do the full chapter So let's see. Um, nope, that's not it. Anyways, but test all things, hold fast to which is true. Yeah, prove all things. There's another verse out there that how to test difference. Do not believe. Here we go. Do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see if they be true. Uh, I have to find, let's see. Do not believe every spirit. Do not believe every spirit. You're getting a fool. <laughs> a live look on how I do things here, guys. How, how easy it is to look this stuff up. We live in an age where we can just type things in, guys. There's no reason why we can't find the truth. Okay. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out in the world. You see... That means everything I say, do not believe it until you can prove it. Until you got it in front of you and you can look at it, right? Don't believe a single word. If you believe in me before you have looked at it yourself, you are doing yourself a disservice. Okay? Look it up yourself. Have your own mind. You know what I mean? Look things up yourself. You know, I love Now You See TV, and I'm a fan of their stuff, but there was a good three, four years where I believed every little thing they said, you know what I mean? And Which I do pretty much believe most of the, you know, stuff. But we got to look this stuff up ourselves. Even though I fully, 100% trust them, we still got to look it up ourselves, guys. We got to look it up ourselves. <laughs> And read it ourselves. And see what? Because you, you may see something that I don't. You know what I mean? <laughs> Anyways. That went on a little bit longer than I wanted it to. But. Hope you guys were edified. And that you guys got something from this. And. I do want to say. I appreciate. All the. The incoming people that have been watching the videos man. God is good. I just want to say that. But anyways, you guys have a wonderful day.